Hello and welcome to this first tutorial on using App Inventor 2 from the Royal Society of Edinburgh. App Inventor is a web-based application, so I'm going to open up my web browser, in this case Google Chrome, but other browsers will work too. And I'm going to enter the URL. This takes me to the App Inventor front page with lots of announcements about the latest developments in App Inventor. And I'm going to click on Create to start building my own apps. You will need a Google account to use App Inventor. As you can see, I've already entered my credentials, so I'm just going to click on Sign In here. And it's going to ask permission to access my Google account. I'm going to allow that. And you might want to make sure to tick that box, Remember this approval for the next 30 days, so that you don't get this screen every time you log on. And after a couple of questions to get started, I'm presented with the release notes page. It's always worth giving this a quick read to see if there's any important changes since the last time you used App Inventor. And straight away we're taken to App Inventor's projects page. This is a list of all the projects that we've created so far. And as you can see, it's empty because we're just getting started. So the first thing I'm going to do is start a new project. App Inventor asks me for a name for the project. Now it's very important that you don't include any spaces or start with a digit. And I'm going to call this project Virtual Pet. All one word, but with a capital P to make it easier to read as two words. Click OK. And we're taken to App Inventor's designer screen. As you can see, there are four main areas to App Inventor's designer screen. On the left hand side, we have a palette of components. These are the things that make up your application. We're talking about buttons, about text boxes, labels and so on. In addition to these basic user interface components, we have those to do with laying out the components on the screen, to do with media and so on. In the middle of the screen we have a viewer and this is where we place our components to make up our app and it gives us a rough idea of how our app's going to look. But to view your app properly, to see exactly what it's going to look like when you view it on a phone, you're going to have to connect a phone for live testing or view it on App Inventor's built-in emulator and we'll see both of those later. Moving over, we have our components panel and this gives us a list of all the components that are in use in our app and allows us to rename or delete them. And at the bottom, we can upload different kinds of media which our app's going to use. Sounds, graphics and so on. On the right hand side, we have our properties panel. And that allows us to change the settings for each component in our mobile app. So the first stage in creating our app is to assemble and set the properties for the screen components. So I'm going to start off with the screen one component itself. The About Screen property gives us a chance to enter some text that's going to appear in those little About boxes that you can click to get more information about an app. I'm going to leave that blank just now, but that's something you might want to add to your own apps. Most of the properties I'm going to leave on their default values. So the background colour, I'll leave it white. I won't be setting a background image. I am going to set an icon so I can recognise the app on my phone. So I'm going to upload a picture of a cat. I choose my file. Choose the cat, open it up, click OK and it will take just a moment to upload to App Inventor servers. And there we are. I'm going to set the screen orientation to be fixed in portrait mode. And the title I'm going to set to Virtual Pet and you can put your own name here. It's important to realise that this is just a caption that appears on the screen and has nothing to do with the project name that we set earlier. And you can see it updates on the viewer immediately. I'm now going to assemble the other components in my application. First of all, a button. Looking at the properties palette, there's quite a lot of options here and I'm not going to worry too much about most of them. I'm going to leave the background colour on its default setting. I'm going to leave it enabled because I want it to work. I'm going to leave height and width set to automatic so the button will stretch to accommodate any picture or text that I put in it. I'm going to set the image to the picture of the cat. And you can see text for button 1 appears in the middle. I don't want that so I'm just going to select it and press delete. I'm going to include a label to display some text on the screen. I'm going to set it to bold. 
make it quite big, 36 point, and I'm going to set the text to stroke me. Lastly, I'm going to add a sound component to my app. So going into media, I'm going to drag sound over on top of my app, but when I let go, it's going to appear at the bottom under non-visible components because this component doesn't actually appear on the screen. I'm going to set the source of the sound to meow. And I'm going to leave the minimum interval at 500 milliseconds, half a second. That's how long the sound's going to last. And that's us. But before I go on, I'm going to make sure that all my components have sensible names so I can recognize them easily. So button one, clicking on rename, would be better called button pet. And label one, label instruction, because it gives an instruction to the user, and sound pet. And that's us created and set all the properties for the components in our app. Now it's very important to understand that whilst we've created all the components for our app, it doesn't actually do anything because we haven't given it any instructions or program code. So what we're going to do now is open up the blocks editor and give our app some instructions, some program code. Join us in the next video to find out how.